Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Money League. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, EPL. And this is a new show we premiered last week. So if you have not looked into that, check it out. We're going to talk about Premier League injuries, betting, and of course, analysis from our super awesome soccer doc, Dr. Atanda. How are you doing today? Good, good. Thanks for having me, guys. Glad to be here. Yes. Uh, and uh, always our uh, our sports injury reporter, a.k.a. Traveling Nurse, a.k.a. R.L. Mills. How are you doing, Mills? Hey, how's it going, man? It, it was great. Is it, it's great. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, a lot of matches. It's going to be jam-packed this upcoming week. So yep. let's hope that these squads can remain healthy. Yeah, we thought Boxing Day was going to be packed, but it looks like the newer games, like every team is going to play two games within a span of like five to six days. Uh, I think uh, the bench is going to get uh, tested this week. So let's uh, let's see how that happens. Uh, let's do like a quick recap of the Boxing Day. Uh, so I'm going to start with myself because I kind of predicted the results of Tottenham and Brentford. I predicted it's either going to be Brentford win or a draw. So like I'm taking a win for that. Uh, I kind of some of something felt that Tottenham was not ready for uh, ready for the game. And uh Looks like that was my standard of the week. Uh, Dr. Atanda, what was your standout from the Boxing Day game so far? You know, to be honest with you, um, you know, we had talked about the Everton Wolves games last week, and I think I was leaning towards Everton. They just kind of have a bigger name. They've been along, around in the premiership longer. Wolves had a brand new coach. They're basically at the top of the relegation zone. I didn't think they'd be able to pull it out, but they were able to squeak out a 2-1 win. Uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. So I thought that was definitely something notable. Yep, agreed. Again, we thought it was going to be a coin flip, but I think Wolves played really well. Uh, Mills, what about you? What was your standout? That Omar said, uh, "How about Newcastle jumping all over Leicester City?" Yes. I mean, I mean, we said, I mean, we we, uh, we all pretty much thought that um, Newcastle had a leg up in this game, but oh, um, but oh my goodness, I said, but oh my goodness, they just jumped on them. They could do whatever they want in the pitch, and I'm telling you right now, Miguel Almiron is the most underrated winger slash midfielder in the entire league. I saw him growing up in Atlanta. I saw him when he played for Atlanta United. He played more centrally as an attacking midfielder. But since they moved him out to the wing, they've just completely unlocked his creativity. And he's always was top 10 in assists. And now he's potentially like he's a world beater right now. Yep. Uh, I think Newcastle is kind of uh, hot right now. But let's see. They have two games coming up. So maybe uh, things might change. Uh so, well, like I mentioned before, uh, we have two games. Every team is playing two games. We already uh, got done with Liverpool and Leicester City and Brentford and West Ham. Liverpool, of course, beat 2-1 uh, with the own goal. Both own goals, right, Mills? Yep, two, yes. two own goals. I, I, I just saw the first goal, but apparently the second goal was an own goal, too. So that, was that to me, was hilarious. Okay, sweet. Let's get started with some injury updates. Uh, Mills, uh, since we, uh, your favorite player from uh, Newcastle, you mentioned, let's start with Newcastle. Uh, they played two games, uh, two games this week. Looks like the first game is against Leeds United, and then they have the big one against Arsenal on Tuesday. Uh, what, a, uh, how is Newcastle looking? Like, what any major injury updates out there? Um, they're they're relatively so they're relatively um um healthy, which is good. I mean, they do. I mean, there uh there's Paul there's Paul Dumont. Paul Dumont, I believe, he has a calf injury. Um, he he's um his return table is um unknown. We really don't know when he'll be back. Um, Alexander Isaac has a thigh injury, and he is. I mean, they said he's returning to um to training soon, but I don't believe. But I don't believe he'll be available for my, either one of these matches. And also, um, uh, Emil Croft, Emil Croft, he has a knee injury, and he's going to be out for at least six to nine months. Okay. So, Ooh. Dr. Atanda, like, uh, any observations in terms of injuries? Like, I know they, they're coming back after, like, a month. I know you touched upon a little bit last uh, last week. Have you noticed anything? Are players kind of, like, fatigued out, especially the ones who went deep into the World Cup? Or people, do they look rusty? How, how are the players looking? To be honest with you, uh, Rahul, I would say they, they kind of look just on regular form. You know, I was a little skeptical last time we talked. Mm -hmm. um, I thought there may be kind of like a little jet lag from people who haven't. You know, they took like a month off. They weren't playing in the World Cup. Thought maybe there'd be a lot of overuse injuries from guys that went really deep. But nothing that really stood out at me. You know, obviously Argentina and France went deep. I'm not seeing like a lot of those kind of players having all sorts of injuries in the, in the week coming back. So 
hopefully, you know, the ones who haven't played will be able to shake off some of that rust, and then the others will yeah. just kind of keep moving along and uh, get back to yeah. midseason form. Okay. Uh, so I, I think Newcastle will take care of business against Leeds United, uh, but Newcastle against Arsenal, uh, Arsenal home on Tuesday. Dr. Atanda, so Arsenal favored uh, minus 120, but something tells me this game is going to be closer than a straight-up Arsenal win. Listen, I mean, Newcastle is in great form, uh, as RL pointed out. Um, they've won five of their, out of their last five games. They're number three in the table now. Arsenal, obviously, they have that pedigree. They have Saka, who's in good form, and everybody else doing their jobs. One versus three, I mean, it's hard to say. Um, it'd be nice for kind of a midseason uh, shakeup, have Newcastle top Arsenal, but I'd probably have to think Arsenal is going to pull out at least a draw, if not a victory for this one. Okay, sweet. Uh, talking about Arsenal, Mills, any uh, injury updates for Arsenal? So they have two games uh, this week as well. Uh, they have two tough games. So they play Brighton uh, on Saturday mm. and Newcastle on Tuesday. So that's like pretty pretty good matchups back-to-back. Uh, that's like two top eight matchups for Arsenal. Uh, any injury updates, Mills, for uh, for them? And they're going to be out. They're going to be without some of their kind of like key cogs in the yep. machine, uh, especially with um, uh, Reese Nelson. He has a muscle injury and he's going to be out for a couple of weeks now. He's questionable to play one of these matches, but like, but the manager is uh, relatively doubtful and stuff like that. Um, of course, you know, Emil Smith Rowe, um, he has a lack of fitness dealing with that growing. He had growing um, surgery. So he's mm-hmm going to be out for a while um and of course and um actually two of their other guys uh nuno taveras and also uh nicolas pepe they've all gone out on loan and of course all we know uh jesus jesus um uh the brazilian jesus he he um he's out with um the mcl injury so yeah, he's they're going to be missing some some yeah some key firepower Dr. Atanda, is Asus like out for the season or are we looking at like a late season comeback out here? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect him to be out um, till May. Um, but some of these injuries, as we talked about in, in earlier videos and earlier sessions, are really nagging, especially guys at that high of a level. Um, you'd expect a good several months. I'd probably look around March to come back. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's one of the le- team leaders in assists, so they're really going to miss him for sure. Yep, and I think like for most teams, like Champions League and European uh, League start soon. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be interesting starting uh, the end of Jan, leading into March. I think, uh, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Yeah, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going to say the round of 16, I think, starts for Champions League in mid-February. Yep. Um, And that's usually crunch time, as you know. It's kind of the backslide back end of the season guys playing in the World Cup, guys nursing these kind of long-standing injuries, playing these back-to-back games, really making up for that that break for the World Cup. Then you throw on other kind of championship cups, and we'll see. We'll, we'll see who's fit and who isn't <laughs> come February, March for sure. Yeah, dude. That, is, that, transfer, uh, that January transfer window is going to be busy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how uh, effective the January window is going to be, most. I think uh, the top teams are going to kind of like load up again. Especially uh, your team, Man City. Uh, Man City. They kind of yeah. they kind of handled business last week, but looks like they have uh, another handful of uh, cupcake schedules going into this week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just saying, dude. I don't know. Yeah, they're, definitely. But they're, I think like their biggest game is against Chelsea. I think that is something to For like sure. talk about. Uh, so, any updates on uh, Man City and Chelsea? Let's start with Man City. Yeah, so, so of course, so of course, the mighty Man City. They are dealing with them. They're dealing with a few. So they're dealing with a few injuries. Uh, Ruben Diaz. He has the hamstring. He has a hamstring strain. Actually, he's going to be out for about a month. Uh, Zachary said uh, Zachary Stefan. He actually he's actually gone out on loan to Middlesbrough. And also uh, Julian Alvarez. It says personal. It says personal. He's still. That he still won't return um, after um, for for the new year for the new year's matches, but um, mm-hmm. um and also um, I just heard that he's been dealing with some uh, muscle injuries. He's been rehabbing some muscular thing because you know um, you know Argent- obviously Argentina they went very deep, they went very right. deep. They won the thing and like um this is uh, it's probably overload, probably muscular overload as uh, Doctor um, Atanda has said. So yeah, we're gonna yeah. be um, definitely yeah. busy. Sources have uh, said some of the Argentine players have. You know, Messi included have just taken some personal time, time. off. Yeah. I know that was his big thing. 
maybe it's kind of shrouded in personal time, but they just want to kind of nurse some injuries, but they don't want to leak that out to the public. It's hard to say. They did go very deep. Um, but, you know, some, if you look at Mbappe, two, three days, he was back, you know, yeah. uh, with whereas other Argentine players are taking a couple weeks off. So it'd be very interesting to see well, what really I don't blame out. them. I don't blame them. They just won the freaking World Cup. Let's be let's be clear. That's like the biggest prize in the entire uh, football field. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't blame them. And of course, like Julian Alvarez and Messi, like you mentioned, like, I don't know. They were really good. They were stars for Argentina. Uh, for sure. So Man City, they play Everton on Saturday, which is probably going to be... And they're probably going to win that game with their backups. But uh, I think the Chelsea game is going to be tough. Uh, any thoughts on that game, Dr. Tanda? Yeah, I mean, I was looking at my notes earlier. Obviously, um, Haaland, Foden, De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva from Man City, number two in the table. They've won four out of their last five games. It's going to be interesting. I know Chelsea, they obviously have the star power. They have the firepower. They have pedigree. I'm a huge Chelsea fan. They've been a bit disappointing as of late um so i'd have yep. to pick man city on this one yeah and, and looking at the uh looking at the odds uh man city is favored to win minus 150 and uh chelsea to win is plus 420 so wow. i don't think i don't think Not the books much. are even like uh looking at chelsea i think it has to be like an amazing performance with chelsea <laughs> because again anything is possible in football uh mills any major updates uh for chelsea injury wise a few is it a few eduardo eduardo mindy he has an abdominal okay. injury he is doubtful for uh he's actually doubtful for that match for both matches actually uh okay. ruben loftus cheek he has a calf he has a calf strain he is also uh doubtful and also you know still an uh, angolo conte still um yeah that's... having that hamstring injury and reese james with a knee injury he's going to be out for about a month okay uh mm. dr tanda so do you think so like teams like uh, Chelsea who so they're in like eighth in the uh, eighth in the league right now right. they've played only 15 games you're looking at like another 23 games left in the season so is this the right time like for to push players if they're kind of like rehabbing or kind of like see what the backups do and then bring the stars back in like after like the just crunch of schedule is done yeah, I mean, you know, when you look at the grind of the back end of the season, again, with, with Champions League implications coming up, um, UEFA League, and obviously the 23 games of the regular season, the coaches, you know, it's kind of like a chess match, you know, obviously they do all their tactical work and preparing for games, but there's some sort of kind of medical chess match that goes on too, right? Like you have to understand which players are going to be able to grind it out, which ones are going to be able to tough through some some of these injuries, which ones are going to be a bit more ginger and need a little bit more time off. So this is where the players and the coach relationship, the coach is really knowing who's who. I think personally, I, I err on the side of really being conservative, keeping guys fresh, keeping guys healthy, understanding that you have a good five months ahead of you of a big grind if, if, if you go deep into the season in, in, in Champions League, of course. Okay. So well, that's good to know. And uh, looks like uh, Chelsea – who does Chelsea play this week? Oh, Chelsea play Nottingham Forest, and uh, they're almost in the relegation battle. So I think Chelsea can mm, handle that yeah. pretty well. Uh, so talking about my team, Manchester United. Man, you... Cristiano freaking Ronaldo just signed a $175 million deal with some football club in Saudi Arabia. Al Nassar. Al -Nassar. Al -Nassar. I know. <laughs> we have never even heard of that club till like the reports came in like mid-November, late November during the World Cup that he's going to sign this monster contract. I don't know. Like I'm happy that he's gone. He's making his money, but how much money does he need? God knows. He yeah. makes like a million dollars per his Instagram, per one Instagram post. So, well, I'm glad. Make his money. But uh, I'm also happy for United. They were they look really strong against Nottingham Forest, three three nothing. Uh, thoughts on uh, that one, Doctor Atanda? Like, uh, were you able to check out that game? Like, what are your thoughts on Manchester United so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, without Manchester, I'm um, sorry, without Cristiano Ronaldo, I, I think they'll do just fine. Um, they got plenty of firepower. I'm a big fan of uh, Anthony Martial and Marcus Rashford. Um, they have plenty of firepower. They are playing Wolves next, I believe. Um, yep. And as we know, Wolves is teetering on relegation at number 18. 
So yeah, I would I'm, definitely expect that game to, I wouldn't say a gimme, but I would expect it to be kind of something where they can kind of let their foot off the gas pedal. So, you know, I, I, I've never always, I've never been a huge fan of Man U, but in, in this particular instance, I think they'll be fine over the next several games. And the distraction from Cristiano Ronaldo, they'll put that in the rear view mirror and keep moving. Man, Man U is going to, Man U is, a, ahead, is about to blitz. They're about to blitz Wolves. And this is not going to be, it is not going to be. And Terrell, like, and like Marcus Rashford is the most exciting player. He's the hottest player in the league right now. I mean, he's been putting the goal, he's been putting the ball in the back of the net like it's absolutely nothing. And like, in, he, they kind of need him. They kind of need him to do that because uh, Jadon Sancho, he, He's been having problems with his match fitness, and we don't know if it's fatigue. We don't know if it was a muscular thing, but he is definitely going to need some time. Um, uh, Scott McTominary, he he's um, he's sick and he's been ruled out. Of course, the goalkeeper Lissandro Martinez from um, Argentina, he's been arriving late. He's going to be arriving yeah. late from um, thing like Doctor Atanda said, getting some personal time and potentially um, rehaving some uh, minor injuries. And of course, uh, the, uh, Diego Delot with a hamstring injury. Yeah, I think Martinez Delot are not like the main starters anyway, so mm -hmm. that's not too uh, worrying. But uh, Jaden Sancho, like, is that something to be worried about, Doctor Tonda? Because I think United probably need him eventually, right? Yeah, I mean for sure. I mean he's kind of a big time player. Um, I didn't see the exact reports um, from his studies just to get a sense of exactly how long it'll be. Um, mm -hmm. You would hope probably in the next few weeks he'd be able to come back. Yeah, well, they play uh, Wolves uh, on Saturday, and then they play uh, AFC Bournemouth on Tuesday. So, again, back-to-back, -back, kind of like the bottom half matchup. United should take care of business. I'm sorry, but um, just a quick word on J um, J uh, Jadon Sanchez. Just like the manager said, he is unlikely to feature anytime soon, and he has a return, and there actually is a return timeline of, of, of January 14th. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't expect him to play in the in either in either of these couple yeah. of matches coming up. I think I think the biggest blow for United this week was Gakpo signing for Liverpool, which was hilarious. He played for Eric Vata. like like he should have been a United guy. United should have bounced on that. Uh, Mills, like I know he signed for Liverpool. Do you have any contract details on that? I know it's like thirty-seven million dollars or something like that. Um, yes, yeah, said yes, he did. He actually signed. He signed, I believe, a um three or a three to four year deal, and the the um the transfer fee was about forty-five million euros. And okay. um, yeah, and he's already in, and he already left for England from, and they and they had agreed with uh, the Dutch side PSV. Who he mm -hmm. had played for, and and like they said, the World Cup, you can. He has made a whole lot of money, just like uh, Denzel Dumfries. His um, thing, his his transfer value went up for about eighteen million. Now it's about thirty eight million and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they saw they saw him play. They saw um, Cody Gakpo play. They said, let me see, four matches. Said, four matches, three goals, two assists. Yeah. Hey, I, awesome. I I fully expected Man U to um sign. I said, oh, he's going to Man U. I said, he's going yep. to Man U. I said, darn it. I said, darn it. He's going to Man U. I know. I know. I was, I was a little bummed because uh, I think, uh, like, the coach wanted both Frankie de Jong uh, and Gakpo. And, and Gakpo. Neither, that would have been nasty. And neither of them came to United. So that's, uh, that's a bummer. Kind of disappointed. But again, like, every World Cup, there is, like, handful of players who kind of, like, skyrocket. I think I still remember, like, one of the World Cup stars, in my opinion, was 2010 uh, Mesut Ozil. Like, he was just awesome. killing it for uh, mm -hmm. Germany. And then he was like, uh, he was playing in uh, Bundesliga, and then Real Madrid came out, just like signed him, and he's like one of the best midfielders or attacking midfield like we have seen, like amazing. Uh, have you noticed like, uh, like you probably watched Dr. Tana more uh, football than me in my lifetime? So what are <laughs> any, any player which stands out to you like uh, after the World Cup who kind of like skyrocketed after that performance? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think. For me, the obvious choice would be Kylian Mbappe uh, from France. I mean, everybody kind of knew he was good. He was playing alongside Messi, alongside Neymar. PSG has tons of money. Okay, fine. You know, they're always winning the league. They're winning games. But he really carried the team, you know, on his back. I mean, uh, Griezmann wasn't really doing what we would expect. Giroud wasn't really doing what we'd expect. And, you know, he was a one-man show specifically in that um, final. Um, the, with that ho heroic performance at his young age exactly. on the world stage for everybody to see. I mean, you can only hope that, you know, obviously he'll probably stick with PSG for a bit, but he could probably have his choice to go elsewhere with a big ticket, um, depending on what his preference is.
I mean, the French, oh, the French no. president himself, I, th- I believe is a Emile Macron. Emile Macron, yeah, the, the French mm-hmm. president himself actually went to PSG and said, yeah, because he wanted to go to Real Madrid because he grew up uh-huh. loving watching me Real Madrid. And then he, the French friend, president was like, uh, no, I don't say you cannot leave France. You're too big. He said, you're too big for us, pretty much. And that's why he signed that, like, what, $500 million extension. To stay Dang. with PSG, so um, yeah, definitely. I think I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys watched the Netflix show on like the FIFA corruption. That is so like so. The French politics, the the president and the politics is so intertwined with the Qatar Qatar World Cup and PSG owning like owned by Qatar pretty much. Yep. So right. I think uh, Qatar and France have this some kind of like an oil deal going in the back end, and I think <laughs> their relative deal was getting the votes for Qatar and like things like this, like kind of like forcing. Mbappe being a French citizen kind of I don't I, I wouldn't say like forcing him but kind of like an incentive or a nudge to s- stay in PSG so I don't know I think there's a lot of corruption out there because given an option would you play for PSG or Real Madrid like let's be clear both have the money and uh, Real Madrid is a bigger name and uh, if you're a star for Real Madrid you're gonna be in the Hall of Fame like Mbappe like PSG I don't know maybe 10 years from now we'll be looking at PSG as this powerhouse like Man City went back in 2010. Everyone made fun of Man City. Now they're like the now big dog. The top, yeah. Right. Yeah. And they so winning even... winning league uh, every year. Yeah. I don't know how much of how much of an accolade that is, as opposed yeah. to making it deep in the Champions League, which PSG unfortunately hasn't been able to do as of late. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Please, please don't. Okay, Milt. Milt. <laughs> Milt. What was your uh, first team before uh, money bought you out? <laughs> first team of money. Um, so, so, so then money bought me. I mean, I really, I mean, I really loved. So I really loved. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was, I was a real, I was a real Madrid guy. I was a. If, if we're course. talking about La Liga, if we're talking about La Liga, I really liked a uh, real so like real Sociedad. I really liked um a uh, real said like real Madrid said real Madrid. I mean, I I I did follow Man City and said NP. The NPSG, the NPSG, because a lot of my is it because it's a, lot a of, juggling um, out there. He doesn't know what to talk about Man City and PSG's history. <laughs> There's nothing to talk about. Okay, let's. Uh, I don't know if you guys like looked into this uh, quote from uh, Jurgen Klopp. Like I think a couple of day, a couple of uh, weeks back, or before the World Cup, he literally came out and said, "Like I cannot, or we as Liverpool cannot compete with teams like Man City, uh, PSG, Real Madrid because they have the money and all the best players are going to go to them." And we have to kind of like develop players and go from there. And I think Klopp is an amazing coach. I wish United got him because there there was a chance, there was a window before uh, Van Gaal took over in 2014. Klopp could have been there. Uh, so let's talk about Li- Liverpool. Mills, uh, any updates on Liverpool? I know that's like they have a couple of good matchups coming up too. Yeah, I said yeah, because um, of course they still have Diogo Jota. He has that hamstring. Um, it's actually it was actually a minor hamstring tear. We thought it was a strain. It's actually a minor hamstring tear. So he's going to be out for a while. Uh, Luis Diaz with a knee injury. Um, uh, Curtis Jones. He has um, he has his match fitness is off. And um, uh, I think the biggest name would be um, uh, would you be James Milner, who suffered that um, uh, hamstring injury in the Carabao Cup. He mm-hmm. it, it actually is a bit worse as a great. Two without a great one, so he probably will not feature. He's gonna miss uh 17 and 18, so he's gonna miss this week and I think both matches. Okay, uh, so Dr. Atanda, I know like last week you touched upon uh MCL grade one, grade two, grade, grade three. Can you like uh, give us a uh kind of like insight into like what's the difference of like hamstring grade one, grade two, grade three? I know like the severity increases, but is there like something specific in terms of the return timeline? It's pretty similar uh, for knee MCL injuries. Um, Hamstring and groin injuries and abdominal uh, strains are a bit more nagging. They do tend to last a bit longer. Um, The difference between ones, twos, and threes in terms of prognosis and timing is very similar for the knee. For a grade two hamstring, um, I'm not surprised that Milner is missing the next, you know, few games. It's several weeks. Um, grade three injuries could be several months. Um, so, you know, grade one injuries, that's where we see a lot of just fatigue and, and just guys with lack of rest. But the twos and threes are really those kind of traumatic injuries. Um, and we kind of feel for them because they get to a point where they feel pretty good, but they're still not 100 percent and they're not ready to, to, to be back in regular form, especially at that high level. 
Um, so I wouldn't be surprised even if he misses, you know, into 19 and 20 games. Uh, I mean, the 19th and 20th game of the season as well. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, volume of games are playing. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Milts, any other like major uh, major injury update for like like and the league as such? Uh, something we missed? I know, like, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, well, of course, like, well, just. That um maybe not major, but um you know, uh Dennis uh Dennis Pratt from uh for Lakers Sixler City he actually suffered a, a rib bruise in this last match and he's actually going to be out for about three to four weeks is what's what they're saying, um and of course um James Madison their center attacking midfield actually has a knee sprain he's going to be out uh for a while he's going to be out for a while too so um. Um, other than other than that, I really haven't seen any like okay. other big ones other than like the ones that affect like um, the the matches that's going to play. Doctor Tonder, have you seen any? Uh, no, not really much else than we've kind of reported and covered on. Um, I think a lot, nothing, you know, big ACL injuries, shoulder dislocations, or big concussions or anything that I've noted this week. So uh, when the uh, sometimes they keep the injury pretty broad. Uh, so when they come and say out like, "Oh, it's a knee sprain," what does that mean? Yeah, um, there's a bit of showmanship there in politics. They don't always, especially for the bigger name players, mm -hmm. bigger clubs, they don't always want to venture forth the extent of the injury because it has a lot of implications and it definitely involves like the chess match with the coaches and who they're playing and such. But your regular knee sprain is usually when somebody tweaks their knee, there's a little, um, like a little rotational component to the bones, and they tweak it. They kind of limp off. They walk off. They're able to jog maybe, but they can't sprint at full force. They don't have a lot of swelling. They get an MRI, and they just see some inflammation. Then they usually just chalk that up to a knee sprain. Um, when they talk about like tears is when you actually see significant damage on the MRIs, and that's when they come out and talk about ACL tears, MCL tears with different grades. But there's a lot of just kind of generic, vague nomenclature dedicated to knee sprains, which makes it very confusing for folks. But usually it just means that it's something kind of minor that you shouldn't have to worry too much about. And uh, Dr. Tonda, when we um uh, staying on that subject, and because I know because I know for because I know for a fact when I see in in the ER and also and um and when I see MRI sometimes like that too, and um when I look and I see the lig and I see the ligament because there's a saying that ligaments never truly heal, and is that because that um ligaments they don't have as many blood vessels as other soft tissue? Exactly. So as we know, ligaments connect to bones whereas tendons connect muscles to bones, right? So when you look at muscle, when you eat hamburger and beef, you see all of that red, all of that blood. It's the same thing with our own muscles. Sorry to be graphic, but the tendons are, are really nourished um, by a significant amount of blood supply, whereas ligaments aren't. So that's why when you tear your ACL, your anterior cruciate ligament, um, we can't just go in and repair it the way we can repair other things because the blood supply is very poor. We have to take the whole thing out and put a brand new one in. Um, and the healing takes, you know, up to nine, 12 months in certain situations. So it's a blood supply issue. Um, but unfortunately, connecting two bones together as ligaments do is an enormous task. That's why they create so many issues and so many problems for guys when they do have injuries to those uh, connective tissue structures. Especially if you're using a different type of graft as well, too, because like those that you just putting those in, so putting those in it like and where you get it from the tissue you get where you get it from in the body that also affects recovery time as well. From For sure. Here, here. The rule of thumb when we do ACL reconstruction or, or most ligament reconstructions is that for young, ha active, healthy people, we try to use what's called autograph. So that's using their own tissue from their own body. For old guys like me, if I were to tear something, we'd use allograft, which allograft, is. Yeah or somebody who's you know passed away but for high level professional athletes for sure we're always using their own tissue because it is the best chance of healing and it has the best chance of preventing the subsequent injury from happening again in the future yeah with their own fact with their own healing factors and stuff too that's also a big thing too exactly that's that's super that's super informative like in terms of uh the injuries as such so uh thanks dr Atanda, kind of like opening up some things because like people like me we don't know what's happening we just hear the news and be like yeah they're out for four to six weeks we don't know what's happening in the background uh exactly. sweet yeah uh so uh let's start with you dr tanda have you looked into the schedule for this week every team is playing two matches like i mentioned earlier to start the show what 
give me your top three matchups. I think there are a lot of good matchups. Let's start with you. What are your top three matchups? And are you looking at any upset? And give us your upset pick. Yeah, you know, I have my notes here. Um, I'm looking at at Man City Everton. I think that's going to be a great game. Not to jump on RL's team, but I think Man City's been doing great. Won four out of their last five games. Erling Haaland is in great, great form. 20 goals this season. People are talking about him getting to 50 uh, in all competitions <laughs> by the end of the season. We'll see. That, that's a bit aggressive, um, but that's a possibility. Obviously, I'm pulling for my boys from Chelsea against Nottingham Forest. Um, they're a little low on the, on the table. Nottingham is at, at 19, um, but I think that'll be a good matchup. I'm hoping that'll bring Chelsea back, give them kind of their legs back under them, a nice kind of easy game to kind of come back a little bit into form. And last but not least, um, it was a toss up for me, but I'm, I'm, I'm jumping on this Newcastle bandwagon. Uh, last week <laughs> I wasn't a believer, um, but they, they put up good showing this past week. Um, I like them against Leeds, you know, five straight wins for them number three in the table so far. So I think they're going to keep that momentum going. Okay, sweet. Uh, and what's your upset pick for this week? I was wrong. I was wrong last time. Um, but I'm going to take a stab for all you Arsenal fans out there. I'm going to say they're Brighton. Number seven is going to give them all they can handle, and it'll either be a draw wow. or a loss. Okay. You heard okay. it here first. You heard okay. it here first. Put it down. Okay. Mills, uh, uh, what are a couple of matchups uh, you're looking forward to this week and your upset pick? Okay, I'm going to start with Tottenham versus Ashton Villa. Tottenham has been starting so slow. They went down 2-0 to Brentford on Boxing Day, and it took uh, a Herculean effort from um, Harry, from Henry, uh, for Harry Kane, and um, uh, somebody else dropped it, put in another one just to, for them to draw. So not only am I looking at that match, my upset pick is going to be that Ashton Villa is going to beat Tottenham. That is my upset pick of the of course I'm looking at man of course I'm looking at Man City and Chelsea. I think Man City is going to be that is a dog fight that's going to be a bar fight and whoever controls the midfield is going to win it give me Man City over Chelsea and another one that I'm looking at is like I said I got to go Newcastle Leeds because I know Leeds has started to use um the American Brendan uh Aronson more as a central forward. Mm -hmm. why, why does a great burr holder do that but anyway <laughs> um, he's starting more in the center and like he's been um really good for leeds but newcastle is just too hot miguel almiron on the wing um feet um connecting with Saka. um i like to, i like his playmaking and he's going to be the difference newcastle is going to beat leeds okay uh i don't see us aston villa beating tottenham they're coming off like a four uh, four game losing streak, and Harry Kane is tipped off. He's gonna come back uh, bongos. Yeah. I like the anytime prop for Harry Kane to score this game as well. So the best couple of matchups I'm looking forward to is of course Chelsea and Man City. I think that's gonna be amazing, uh, but I don't think it's gonna be close. I think Man City is gonna win like four one or three one, something like that. It's probably gonna keep it like one one going into halftime. And the other matchup I like is uh, Arsenal and uh, oh my god, what did I say? Arsenal and Newcastle. I think that's like a top three matchup there. Uh, I'm I'm pulling for uh, Newcastle, but Arsenal are a wagon right now. They're killing it. And my upset pick for this week is I'm picking up picking it up against my team, Man United. I think Wolves are going to draw against Man United one one. Oh my I don't, God! You, you think Wolves going to draw against Man? You think Wolves going Wolves going to draw against Man United? Wow. No, knowing my United, they always dr drop an egg when it's needed, <laughs> and I think that's the game they're going to drop, and then they're going to come back and beat the hell out of uh, uh, Bournemouth. So I think that's going to happen. And Wolves are coming in hot. They won. Uh, they won last week. Uh, so I think they're coming in hot. They might like get a like maybe like a one-one. I don't see ha if United get pretty hot, like two-zero to start with. I, I probably I might be wrong, but I think it's going to be one one. So, yep, that's my pick. I mean, that's a pretty um, big that's a pretty big egg you're talking about. I mean, Wolves is you know top of the relegation zone. Um, I, I I'd, I'd be shocked. If they, well, I've I've seen I've seen win, where they do have a new coach. They did win their last game, yeah. Gorman. Yeah. I mean, they. I mean, they would have to be like they would have to like we'll fall see. asleep That's at funny. the wheel. They would have to like fall asleep <laughs> at the wheel for um, yeah. for wolves for wolves to get on man you like that. Yep. 
Well, uh, looks like the next uh, five to six days is going to uh, be amazing with so many uh, football matches all over Europe and the full, full off season is up. New Year's is going to be great. I hope everyone have like a happy New Year. Uh, Mills and Alfred Danda, thank you again for joining me every week. We'll come back again next Friday. Subscribe to the channel. Mm -hmm.